Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll explore the process of making clothes interact with static meshes in your scene, such as furniture, stairs, floors, or walls, during U Draper cinematic cloth simulation. In brief, simply add the static meshes you want your clothes to interact with into the Draper Collider solid bodies. For example, I'm adding these stair and floor meshes into the solid bodies array. During simulation, your clothes will then collide with these meshes instead of passing through them. In a previous video, we demonstrated a wedding dress interacting with stairs as the character walked upstairs, fell, and sat down. We'll walk you through the steps we took to create that video, hoping it proves useful for your own projects. Instead of handling everything within the main scene, we open a separate, empty scene and copy-paste only the static meshes that will interact with the dress. In our case, the floor panels and stair elements. We've also added a static hull mesh for the cat. To ensure a smooth simulation, we want to avoid any overlap between our character and the static meshes to prevent potential issues where the clothes might get stuck between the solid meshes and the character mesh. We use metahuman characters in our tutorials, but you can use any other character. Let's add the Draper components. Given its metahuman nature, its collider component consists of separate body and face meshes. We utilize simplified meshes without fingers, toes, detailed facial features, and ears. A tutorial detailing this process is linked in the description. Furthermore, ready-made metahuman collider meshes and an A-pose with straight arms can be found in the U-Draper plugin extras folder. At this point, we can add static meshes for the floor and stairs into the solid bodies array. We've also added a static hull mesh for the cat. It is important to note that when employing low-poly static meshes, there is a risk of clothes getting caught on sharp corners. To alleviate this, consider smoothing out sharp corners using tools such as the bevel function in Blender or Maya. Subsequently, we select the Draper simulation component and execute the export collider command by using the corresponding button. Now, jumping into our marvelous designer project and add our character collider mesh. Once that's in place, we need to tweak the original dress design to snugly fit our mannequin. Next up, we get hands-on with materials, assigning distinct ones to different parts of the dress. Keep in mind, we're setting the stage for configuring their visual and physical properties down the line in Unreal Engine. To ensure the veil won't fall from our character's head, we throw in a cap with a transparent material. This cap will be bound to the head in UE, keeping our veil in place. Make sure the layers of the skirt and the veil don't intersect with each other. For that matter, Add and drape them one after the other to ensure there's no entanglement between layers. As we discussed in the previous video, particle distance and mesh resolution matter for the cloth simulation performance. Start by using a low or medium resolution meshes with a particle distance of 15 to 20 millimeters when testing your simulation to save time. Once you're happy with the results at this level, amp up the resolution, 
reduce that particle distance and copy the material properties in the Draper editor for that final cut. Now we're bringing our dress into the Unreal Engine for the cinematic simulation. Choose the cinematic option in the import dialog, but for this dress, we're skipping the bake textures option. After importing, double check that the garment fits the character like a glove and click the save button. Notice that the wrap option automatically turns on after saving. While this is handy for real-time simulation, especially with animations from different poses for the cinematic simulation, it's best to always start animations from the same pose used during draping and importing. Now, it's time to fine-tune the material's properties using the Draper Editor. Click on the Pencil Edit button to open the Draper Editor panel. Keep in mind that when importing from Marvelous Designer, Base Color and Normal Textures tag along, but Metallic, Roughness and Opacity maps will be missing due to the OBJ Export feature. For better flexibility, we've preloaded all the textures we'll be using for this dress into our project. Moving on, let's apply some physical properties, like silk chiffon and silk satin, using the presets. We can also copy one material's settings and paste them to another material like this. Then save the new material settings. Don't forget to apply bindings for the invisible cap, the top and the cuffs, to make sure they stay in place. Before diving into the simulation recording, let's fine-tune some properties for our cinematic simulation. Since zero coordinate can be elsewhere in this scene, and we've already explicitly specified the meshes for the floor, we want to set the default floor normal to zero. In this tutorial, we won't delve into intricate details, but rather, we'll breeze through a quick setup similar to what we did in the previous tutorial. First things first, let's set the quality to 2. The solver iterations are good at the default 10, and substeps remain at 1. Now, on to the next collider. The outer thickness determines the gap between the body and cloth, akin to what we've previously set for the avatar skin offset in Marvelous Designer. Let's leave the other parameters at their default values. Moving on to the cloth section, we'll set the cloth thickness to 2 mm and mirror Marvelous Designer's self-thickness setting for now. With our settings in place, it's time to kick off the simulation and record the geometry cache. Check out our geometry cache tutorial linked in the description. After simulation is completed, we can check out our geometry cache to make sure that everything looks good.
Once we're pleased with the simulation results, we're ready to render the final video in the main scene.